Hello, I'm uh, Rıza Berkan and today's topic is time, the devil of physics. What is time? What makes things change, move, or evolve? Is time some invisible hand? Some mysterious pacemaker? Or is it just a ticking machine we made it up? I call time the devil of physics because it's hidden in plain view, fooling even the most sophisticated scientists, and maybe the root of every roadblock we encountered in scientific thinking. To remind you of the fact that there has been no physics experiment where uh, the time was measured directly. Scientifically speaking, time is a big unknown. In this series of videos, we will investigate time and how it is interpreted in different subjects of physics. Let me give you a little taste of what is coming soon. There are eight videos as shown on the screen, and if you subscribe to this channel, you will be notified each time a new video is released. Let's briefly go through the list. We will start with the classical concept of time and the assumptions behind it. The very first question we will ask is this, are time and clock two different things? Clock is supposed to be a measure in time, but is it really a measure in time? And that's the main investigation in this whole video series. Just this, are time and clock two different things? Or are they the same thing? No, they are not the same thing. Again, I'm telling you, it has never been proven in any experiment that they are the same thing. Consider the growth of a flower, for example. It has never been shown that the clock measures some physical property of how fast the flower grows. Then what does a, a clock measure? Nothing. It's a counter. It's almost like a money counter. What does this mean for the entire physics? That's what we are about to explore together. In part two, we will start from the birth of classical physics by this genius man, Isaac Newton. One of the first questions in this segment is, is time a common denominator of everything we know in science? Unfortunately, it is. Look at these fundamental equations in physics. Time is everywhere. Well, think about it. If time was interpreted wrong, Everything and every concept and every theory we know will collapse. Even the speed of light, it has time in it. In part three, we start exploring the special relativity theory, SRT, by Albert Einstein. So I'm using the abbreviation SRT for simplicity. Challenging one of the basic assumptions of time, linear progression equals steps going forward. Einstein says there may be cases time can be elongated, and we call it the time dilation. One of the questions we will ask is this, why do we need light to explain time? Light is observation, right? Observation is our sense of perception. Does this mean time is nothing but a perception? We will investigate this to see if it makes any sense. But before we deal with the relativistic considerations, we have a more basic question in front of us. Does the definition of a second change every day? Yes, uh, due to Earth's rotation slowing down. Remember in the early days of science, we took Earth's rotation as the reference point for defining the clock. We call it the solar clock. 
One rotation is 24 hours, 1440 minutes, 86,400 seconds. If one rotation is taking longer every day in the real world, it means that the definition of one hour, one minute, and one second is also taking longer every day as time progresses. What about the speed of light, which is supposed to be a constant? That number you see on the screen has second in it. If the definition of uh, one second changes, that number cannot remain constant. Did Einstein say anything about this? I'm not sure. In his time, there were no atomic clocks, therefore he should have said something about it. Speaking of atomic clocks, the modern definition of one second is tied to the cesium-133 isotope. The way it is done is to count the cycles of atomic vibrations in a known one second window to end up with this number. The problem is, when they were setting this up, how did they pick a window of one second? They had to be using a solar clock or conventional clock or mechanical clock, whatever is was available. Because in the beginning, you cannot have an atomic clock to define your atomic clock, right? Which means the initial count was relying on some old technology. Let's assume tomorrow I want to replicate this process, reset the atomic clock using the old technology. One second window may be longer for the same amount of atomic vibrations, or the count may be different for the same length of a one second window. Now, no one can claim with certainty that such replication would result in identical results, because we know clock, but we don't know time. The bottom line is the difference between time and clock may not be just semantics. There may be something unknown to physics about time. Next, we will study the general relativity theory, GRT, in part four. It's a challenge to one of the assumptions of time again, absolute time. In other words, time is no longer an independent variable. It is affected by gravity and gravity is everywhere. Is space-time actually space clock? If time and clock are two different things, this whole model will be questionable. Let's make one thing clear. Einstein does not explain gravity by space-time curve. He simply tells us how it is or how it should be. Data should fit the theory like fitting the shoe to Cinderella's foot. Some scientists say that this shoe in particular does not perfectly fit. Perhaps because space is something we can touch, see and measure directly. But time, none of that. So this, this combination of space-time is somewhat debatable, especially if we are questioning if time and clock are two different things. Another conflicting situation arises with this question. If gravity is everywhere, does it mean special relativity theory, SRT, is useless? In a way it is. Uh, SRT assumes no gravity, no effect of gravity. Well, show me a corner of the universe where gravity is zero. This itself is a big debate today. There is some good evidence that the universe is 85% dark matter. Dark matter is invisible matter that fills up the entire universe, producing the gravitational effect and it is a theory, it states that there has to be dark matter to keep everything together in the universe in the way we observe. Another shoe to fit Cinderella's foot. In part 5, we look at the concept called arrow of time. Entropy versus probability. 
A crude explanation of why time always goes forward. Just to remind you, entropy is a measurement of randomness. In a spray can, for example, the atoms are compacted by pressure, all squeezed into an order. When sprayed, atoms are all over the place. That's disorder and high entropy. Note that energy put into the system is equal to the energy released. So the only imbalance is in entropy. And this somehow determines that everything in the universe is following the arrow of time, going from low entropy to high entropy. Well, it's another shoe uh, not fitting well to the Cinderella's foot, because under some conditions, uh, we can go from high entropy to low entropy. We will elaborate this in part five. For example, consider this question. How does entropy explain time considering the Big Bang theory? Well, let's put it to test. According to the Big Bang theory, all the objects in the universe are expanding, just like in the example of spraying gas from a can. Entropy is increasing, gravity is getting weaker. What happens when the expansion slows down and comes to a complete stop? or it keeps accelerating uh, to infinity. Today, there is really no clear answer which scenario is going to prevail, and each case will have a different implication on how time behaves. General relativity theory says, time should speed up if the gravity is weaker, as it claims to happen at higher orbits of Earth. You see the confusion here, it might as well be contradicting to the entropy of the expanding universe. One of my favorite investigations is in part six, unique time versus energy symmetry. The beauty of symmetry discovered by Amy Noether. Symmetry shows itself everywhere in physics but we will only look at uh, the energy symmetry and how it conflicts with the uniqueness of time. Hence the question, is energy symmetry a nature's law for non-unique time? There will be some simple thought experiment, hopefully you will enjoy. Well, what is the uniqueness of time? In Einstein's relativity theories, you will encounter the concept of different clocks based on different observers. That's very difficult to accept, counterintuitive argument. What does it mean to have different clocks? Does it mean time passes differently or just clocks running differently? This is what we are going to discuss in part six in the light of energy symmetry. In part seven, we will look at the continuous time versus quantum mechanics. There will be several questions here, but the most exciting one is, who provided the best explanation of time? It's like a hidden gem in the noise of scientific jargon, and it may surprise you. The final part is the thin blue line between reality and fantasy. We will challenge the claims made by known scientists like the twin paradox, begging the question, is it possible that we don't know what we don't know when it comes to time versus clock? I want to ask this question to these fellows. You may know these physicists. I am sure they are respectable scientists and they are making science more exciting for, a ki for kids with their videos. But there is an undeniable act of uh, bending the truth going on uh, when time and clock are used interchangeably. I'll show you one example, a video uh, by a physicist, Jim Al-Khalili. I've got two identical clocks here. Now, because the clock lower down is closer to the center of the earth, it feels ever so slightly a stronger gravitational pull than the clock higher up. Einstein's theory says that the lower clock will tick by at a slightly slower rate 
than the higher clock. Basically, gravity slows time down. Did you catch it? He assumes time and clock are the same. His last sentence makes things more exciting, doesn't it? Time slows down instead of clock slows down. So we will investigate what all these scientists say about the difference between time and clock. Does an exciting fantasy always outperform a boring truth? I'm afraid it does, especially in this day and age of social media. Truth at the end, I hate to say, can be boring. Like, uh, you know, sorry people, there will be no time travel, uh, no staying younger with slow running clocks, no meeting with aliens, and all that fantasies are out of the window. In science, we never shortchange a truth with an exciting fantasy. Speaking of truth, there's a physical truth versus mathematical truth, and sometimes they can be contradictory, and we will examine this as well. Here is the list again. These videos are coming soon. If you subscribe to the YouTube channel, you will be notified. Thanks for watching. Until next time.